Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over how to install a Minecraft server, how to run a Minecraft server locally on your computer. Now this is the restart of a series I used to do called Bucket Plug and Tutorials, but Bucket isn't really the dominant force anymore. It is Paper MC. There's two right now. There's Paper MC and Spigot MC. I prefer Paper. I've been playing around with both of them and I figured out this seems to be the better option. It's community built, the updates are a little bit better, it has greater plugin support. Overall, this just seems, the performance is generally better. This seems to be a better option if you're looking to run a Minecraft server, whether that be on your local system or hosted on a server elsewhere. So these are the two options. This is gonna be focused on this, but if you do go with Spigot, this is basically the same methodology to do this. What you're going to want to do is go to the PaperMC website, papermc.io. I highly recommend you go through basically everything, read up on it, go through their tutorials. They're going to talk about things that I don't. I'm just showing you how to get it up and running and doing some general server configs. So we're going to go over here into downloads and download the latest version, which if, as of recording this video is 201. So click on that. It was updated yesterday it looks like because today's 420 so we're going to save that file it's going to download real quick we're going to pop that on over here and we can close this out for now we're going to make a new folder to keep all this in because if you do it on your desktop it will just create a big old mess so pop that in there and just with any just like with any other jar file you're going to want to right click new create a new text document we're going to call this run.bat, turn it into a batch file. It's going to ask us if we want to change the file extension. Absolutely we do. Right click and then edit this with Notepad++. That's another tool that I would highly advise you use if you're doing any type of editing of batch files, YML files, anything like that. It just makes it cleaner, neater, and it looks awesome. So here, you're going to want to paste in what I have below. It's just a Java command. It's going to run this as a Java. This is how much RAM you're going to give it. So this computer actually has quite a bit. So I'm going to up this to four, four gigabytes of RAM, paper 201.jar. So you're going to want to make sure this is the right name and then ensure that you can just go to rename, slick the whole file of the jar and paste that in there. So you're going to save that, do the initial run, and what that's going to do is it will download the default Minecraft files and a couple other things you're going to need. All right, and then once that is done, it will automatically close out and you'll have some of the files that you're going to be needing, but not quite all of them. What you're going to want to do to get everything is open up the EULA text file and you're going to want to change this to true. What you're doing is agreeing basically to the terms of service. You can open this up, agree to the Mojang terms of service, and we're going to want to save that and then run it again. And it is going to get everything else we need, download everything. And this may take a bit depending on the strength of your computer, your internet speed, everything like that. I'm not running this on the best computer in the world right now, so this is going to take a sec. So I'm going to do a little jump cut and this will be done about now. So when this does this, this is new compared to when I used to run Bucket, it will open up a nice little GUI graphic interface so you can do all the commands and everything from here instead of through the command prompt. To me, it doesn't make a real big difference, but it is nice that it will show how much RAM that this is using. You can see right here how much it's using out of how much is available, which that is the four gigs I gave it. Now, while that runs and finishes up downloading everything and loading the maps and all that, we're going to go in and edit some things. Now, there's not actually going to be much you want to do here. It's because you're going to end up getting plugins and a lot of the plugins will override a lot of these settings, but it is still good to go around and play in these files. One that you're going to want to go ahead and look around in is the server.properties. Like with everything else, you're going to run right click, edit with Notepad++ and it will open this up. Here you'll have your options to change your port, your uh, spawn protection. Now, like I said, a lot of these are gonna be overridden with various plugins, so 
This is good if you're just making a really simple server, but if you end up getting something like World Guard, this is going to be irrelevant to you. So you go through here, you could do white lists, turn that on or off, you could change whether or not animals respawn, set custom resource packs, and I'll be going over some of these features in another video. But overall, that is how you run the Minecraft server. This is your plugins folder, you're going to be putting stuff in here later. and it says done so I would open up Minecraft and jump in but like I said this computer isn't the best but to join the server all you'd want to do is open up Minecraft go to direct connect or add the server local host and connect directly to that if you want other people in your local network to be able to connect what you're gonna to want to do is have them connect to your local IP address and the proper port and I have a separate video on how to do that which I will leave in the description below Otherwise, that is about it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. If this video helped you out in any sort of way, or you just liked it in general, hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe for future videos. I'll have links to additional videos that may help you, such as adding RAM to Java, which results in an improvement in Minecraft performance, and a couple other things. So, thank you so much, and goodbye.